Warning, the views and opinions expressed in this video are not those of a health professional. Please make sure to consult your physician before beginning a new health regimen. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome biggity, biggity, biggity back, y'all. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, how are you? My name is Kelsey, and I'm here every Wednesday and Sunday to share my gastric sleeve, otherwise known as VSG journey. It's my hope that through these videos, you're able to find the answers to questions that you were looking for and couldn't find, or the path to surgical weight loss is made a little bit better. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Um, today, we are gonna be talking about my one month, technically 35 day post-op check-in. Um, I wanted to come and tell you guys everything I've experienced in a nutshell from the beginning until the end. Um, I hope that you guys are in, you know, you're ready for a good long video. I've got my magical notes pad of notes here and it just may be a long ride. So as Wendy Williams would say, grab a snack and come on back because we're going to be here for a minute. If you're not here for the longer videos, that's okay, I get it. Um, but this one, I just couldn't get everything I needed in 10 minutes. So if you're not interested in my longer videos, check out the ones I have down below. There's plenty of ones that are shorter than this. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys get all of the information that you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So today is my one month post-op check-in. Technically, I'm 35 days in. Um, the stats about my surgery. I had my surgery on February the 5th, 2021, and before, um, I was kind of hesitant about releasing my surgeon's name, but I've had so many people ask, so I'm just going to go ahead and release it. Um, I had my surgery with Madikin. Madikin. Added to the dictionary of words that no one knows are. Let's put it in there. Madison Surgical Associates with Dr. Ravindra Malapur. Um, he's very well renowned in my city. He was actually recommended by a person that I went to high school with. She had the VSG surgery and she looked fantastic. Um, and I really felt that he was a good fit for me. I had my first consultation with him. He was very open, very honest. His staff were friendly. Um, and I felt comfortable with him being the person who had my life in his hands. And as I talked about in previous videos, it's really important that you trust the person who is going to be doing your surgery. Um, my starting weight at the day of surgery. Now, starting weight and highest weight, they were the same because your girl did not actively participate in a steady pre-op diet, nor was I required to. Um, I don't know why I wasn't required to lose a certain weight. I don't know what the difference was with my situation because I know some people say, hey, before I can even have the surgery, I've got to lose 30 pounds. That wasn't a requirement of me. Um, my highest weight and the weight of the day of my surgery was 330 pounds, 330.3 pounds. Um, as I said, I didn't have a successful pre-op diet. Um, so yeah, um, as of today, the total pounds that I've lost are 27. My current weight as of our last Wednesday weigh-in, because I'm not able to weigh in for this video, was 303 point something. Um, so that's right at 27 pounds. <clears throat> um, I do want to talk about the pain after my surgery that I really feel like I have a high tolerance for pain. Um, I didn't have much pain. Now, I know some people who are in excruciating pain after the surgery, who can barely take it, who can barely stand up, who can barely walk. And, you know, everyone's walk is going to be different. But for me, I was up and walking. <laughs> it's just letting me know that I hit my 4,000 step mark for the day. Um, 
my walk was different. I was out the same day of surgery walking my backyard. You know, I think I walked my backyard 15 times that day. Um, before surgery, I was prescribed oxy, I'm sorry, yeah, oxycodone, five milligram, five milliliters taken every six hours. And I still have that much of the bottle left. So the first week after my surgery, I was definitely in pain. I wouldn't say it was excruciating. The incision that they pulled my stomach remains out of um, was the one that hurt the worst. Um, anytime I coughed, I would laugh. Um, Lord forbid I had to sneeze. I had to grab a pillow and brace myself and it still hurt like hell to do that. Um, I slept with the bed up. If I just overdid it, I felt completely wiped. But as far as being in like excruciating, horrible, can't take it no more pain, I was not. I did alternate my oxycodone with over-the-counter Tylenol. I feel like that that helped me. So in between the six hours, I would take a, a recommended dosage of over-the-counter liquid Tylenol and it really helped to balance out any pain. I also used a heating pad. I wasn't a big fan of ice. Ice didn't do anything for me. Um, you know, some people say that, you know, they ice it. I definitely used a heating pad um, and I had that baby cranked up on max and I would just, you know, basically like this and I would put it on my incision that hurt the most and I would just lay there, you know, in the bed, chilling, with the bed elevated, this is the bed, you know, my master bedroom bed. It does elevate, so I would just be in the bed. I had to sleep on my back, um, you know, for the first at least two weeks. I'm still sitting, sleeping with the bed elevated, not as much as I was at the beginning of surgery, but definitely more elevated than my husband wants to because he sleeps in the other room because I have the bed elevated. Neither here nor there. Um, so moving on to stalls and no weight loss. Um, during the first two weeks, I lost about 20, three weeks, 25 pounds. When I hit that, the end of my third week, going into my fourth week, um, I did hit a stall. The scale did not move, did not move for at least two weeks, like a week and a half, two weeks. Um, Let's see here. It was very discouraging. Um, the way my life is set up, and I think I've talked to you guys about this in other videos, I would, my life, the, <laughs> the deck of cards that the Lord, you know, thank you, Lord, has given me, I would be the one person out of billions who have had this surgery that the surgery wouldn't work for. I'd be the one person in this world who wouldn't lose no damn weight. I'd be out here looking crazy after 17 pounds of water weight loss, and that's just it. And that's what my mind was at when I when my stall came. I was just like, well, this is it, Jesus. Thank you for the 17 pounds. And I know you guys are like, oh my God, you're so dramatic. But I'm being serious. The way that my life is set up, that's just how it would have been. I just would have been out here not losing no weight. And, you know, I'm glad that the scale did start moving again. I'm glad that that stall was broken. As you guys saw in my last Sunday video, my stall finally broke. And um, there's some little things that I found out that I do have videos coming about. There's tips and tricks and things that I realized that I was doing wrong to hinder me from losing weight as well. But we'll get there. Um, weight fluctuation. Now, I do want to talk about how your weight is going to fluctuate during the first month. Um, it's normal. Once you begin moving back into solid foods, your body is adjusting to that. You may not lose any weight those, you know, that first week that you're on pureed foods. I didn't. And I don't know if that was part of my stall. I don't know. But I know that I didn't, you know, lose any weight. I was starting my pureed foods. Your body is gaining its legs again, so to say. You're moving from full liquid, you know, liquid, clear liquid, then full liquid, which is all still liquid of some sort that has no, I feel like no solid mass that goes straight through your stomach. You're moving from, 
you know, that to slowly eating things that have more mass. So those are ounces of, of whatever that you're putting into your body and your body's happy to be like, oh, well, this is new, you know, thank you. Um, your weight will kind of bounce up and down. For a while, I bounced between 307 and 308. I feel like during my little stall, I was like, Lord, if I see 308 one more time, honey, I went and bought a new scale. That's how bad it was. I was like, you know what? This scale, fuck, I'm going to throw it away. Let me go get another one. So I went to go buy another scale. And guess what? Guess what that scale said? 308. <laughs> so you're going to fluctuate. You're going to bounce back and forth and up and down. It's not permanent. It is going to be okay. Talk it to not only y'all, but I'm talking to me. Um, just to, I guess, give you guys some ideas of the things that I ate during the certain stages. The clear liquid stage, I had sugar-free popsicles, chicken broth, um, and not just chicken broth out of the box. That's the mistake that I made. I'm going to find the chicken broth cubes that I had. It was like Weiler's Chicken and Herb. Y'all, when, when I say them things were so good, it was it had so much more flavor. I didn't have to flavor anything. They were flavored so good. So if I can find those bouillon cubes, I'll link them down below. Um, what else did I have? Broths of any kind, miso soup, wonton soup, the broth from an egg drop soup. I, you know, bought an egg drop soup and strained the eggs out of it and just ate the broth. Um, basically just clear water and the protein drinks. Um, oh, I also had decaf coffee with sugar-free creamer. That was like my, that was my jam. You know, I'm not a, I'm a, I like hot coffee, but I, I typically prefer a more cold coffee. But during this stage, I was killing some decaf coffee with, it was like, like a sweet Irish cream by, um, Coffee Mate. And I'll link that down below too. Um, and it was so good. It was so, it was delicious. <laughs> Moving to the full liquid stage, at stage, I did go to the Progresso soups, like the potato, loaded potato soup and broccoli and cheese soup and cream of mushroom soup. I had a golden mushroom soup. I had just different, bro did I say broccoli and cheese? Yeah, my, um, French onion soup. Those were so good because going from just, those liquids that I was having before to that, I was like, this is the life of luxury. Bring me another bowl, Stansworth, because it was so good <laughs> at that point. Pureed stage, um, I did take a little stab at pre-pureeing some items, and I'm going to see if I can find that picture, and I'm going to insert it if I can. Um, that was a waste of time because I made a, I made like five different things. I had a tuna salad. I had a buffalo chicken something. And then I had an egg salad. And then I had, um, ricotta cheese with pesto and a little bit of tomato sauce. I thought I was up, up here, you know, five-star chef in it because I knew I was going to love every single one of them. And then I think the last one I had was a avocado tahine and a pureed ground chicken. Now, don't those sound good? They did until I almost threw up trying to eat them. I had to throw, every, when I say I made like 95, I had to throw every single freaking one away because they made me sick to my stomach. I couldn't eat them. That's another thing I've had to realize. Your taste buds change. Your stomach be like, uh-uh, sis. You think you like that, but you don't. Don't eat it. Put it down. So that was a waste of money. I also had like a little sugar-free pudding. I had a little sugar-free banana pudding and a sugar-free vanilla, like a white chocolate vanilla Go away, get away. Um, so what I typically, what I basically lived on was refried beans with a little bit of cheese sauce, avocado, smushed avocado with garlic powder, pepper, salt, and a little bit of tahini, mm. mashed potatoes with like you know 
butter, salt, pepper, sweet potatoes. Those were my favorites. I put, you know, my sweet potatoes with a little bit of cinnamon sugar and some butter. I was, I was doing good. I was only eating about two tablespoons at that time, but still. Um, then moved into the soft food stage, which I, which I'm basically still in. Um, a lot of salmon, a lot of chicken, like grilled chicken breast. No chicken with the skin on. So you can do skinless uh, chicken thighs. Um, I've done pork loin. What else have I done? Tuna. Um, but uh, tuna. I think that's about it. I had. I did try a hamburger patty. It was so unbelievably heavy. It made me, all I wanted to do is just lay down. I didn't want to do nothing else but get on the couch. It was horrible. And it stayed that way for hours. Hours. Do you hear me? Hours. Um, so yeah, that's just like a little overrun of the things that I was eating, you know, through each stage. I do have a um, VSG Eat With Me video coming out for you guys. Um, it was requested, you know, I asked you guys if you wanted to see it. I'm in, you know, my five week stage or the fourth stage or the fourth phase or whatever, because every surgeon is different. This was called the, what is this one called with my surgeon? It's called the regular diet and maintaining. So this is what I'm, I'm doing. Um, exercise. As I stated, I would say about four weeks ago, um, I'm not doing any heavy cardio exercising period I do however walk and I get at least 10,000 steps a day excluding the weekends the weekends I do bump it down to 6,000 because I just want to relax um I am not struggling with energy I'm not having any issues with energy um I think that you know I'm blessed that I'm not struggling with that I know some people that just are just wiped um I have been maintaining my energy um through making sure that I maintain my vitamin supplements daily. As you guys know, I was struggling like hell with those, but I did find some that worked for me. I did find some that made me feel good. They're not horrible tasting. I can stomach them. They don't make me feel sick. And I think that they help to boost my energy. Um, I walk daily at work. That's Monday through Friday on my lunch break. And I eat my lunch a little bit after. So that's 30 minutes of brisk walking. And I also work, walk for 20 minutes after I get off. And I only do that three days a week. So five days a week I work. I walk. I do work. You know, five days a week. I walk five days a week for 30 minutes a day. Plus the 20 minutes that I do when I get home. So that's give or take about an hour of um, exercise a day. Um, and it helps to boost your con confidence and mood. Um, I will say there's some days I don't feel like coming home and walking, but once I get out there and I walk and I do my thing and I take that time and I make that effort, it really boosts my mood. It puts me in a good place because I'm like, yes, girl, even though you didn't feel like it, you went out there, you busted your little booty for those 30 minutes and it's rewarding. <clears throat> now I want to talk about some of the mistakes that I've made because we all make mistakes we all gonna do stuff we're not supposed to do and trust you believe you me I've been out here like dear God make me a bird so I can fly far far away from here because I don't know <laughs> what I be thinking sometimes okay so, okay, so I had to go get my example of what I done messed up with. Okay, so y'all know I was struggling with my water intake and I couldn't get my water in. And I was just like, I've got to find a way to get through this. So I was on YouTube and I was watching this young lady and God, she was so sweet. And, you know, she had lost so much weight and she has so much, you know, stuff to tell. And she said, oh, yeah, I maintain my water intake by adding in these little, these little jewels right here. And she specifically mentioned the Starburst Blue Raspberry one, okay? And she had a little cup, and it was cute, and it had a straw and ice. And she's like, yeah, I drink these, and it helps me get my water down. My dumb ass was like, oh, I can use these to get my water down. So I take two. 
And I grab my water bottle. And I, now this is a liter. No, this is 1.5 liter. So I take them and I dump them in. And I drink, and boy, I be out here guzzling. Drinking as much water. I mean, I'm not here just smacking lips and everything. And I'm drinking my water and I'm so happy. But guess what? Your girl was still fucking dehydrated. Do you know why? Because these little bastards have so much sodium in them. So I was basically not drinking any water. I was just out here dehydrating myself. Hang on. Out here making it 95 times harder for my body to hydrate itself y'all everybody is different everybody walk is different i got mango melon strawberry peach lemonade the pink all pink starburst ones don't drink these just drink your water just get your 64 ounces of clear plain water in a day and call it a day don't be out here trying to do that because you're gonna end up like me and you're gonna end up in the hospital please drink your water be consistent don't add nothing to it if you want to add some lemon lime slices and maybe an orange slice by all means do that but do not add those packs because they are not good for you um the next mistake i made I eat too fast, or I, I was eating too fast. I make the mistake of waiting too long to eat, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm starving. Because contrary to what people are saying out here, you do get hungry, and it comes it comes back with a vengeance. Because, you know, for those first three to four weeks, you're kind of like, mm, I don't have to eat. I'm okay. It's not a big deal. But as the time progresses, your stomach, and then I think it's called Gurhan, Gurhan. <laughs> Ghrelin, the hunger hormone, also known as lenormorelin, in, is a peptide hormone produced by ghrelinergic cells in the gastrointestinal tract which functions as a neuropeptide in the central nervous system. It comes back and you're like, oh, oh my god, I'm gonna eat. That's how I felt. Like, like the Hulk when he's changing, you know, from the man to the... Never mind. Um, I'm like, oh my God, I've got to get something in my stomach right now. And so I'm having to cook dinner and that's not, it's not time to eat. And so by the time I sit down and eat, I'm like chewing too fast. And boy, when I tell you it's a miserable feeling, I don't care if you chew that food down to water consistency. If you eat and swallow, eat and swallow, eat and swallow too fast, it's going to sit right here. And it feels like pressure. It feels uncomfortable. All you want to do is lay down. It lasts anywhere between 30 minutes to two and a half hours. Take your time. Make sure you're getting your snacks in. Because if you don't get your snacks in, that's why you get hungry. And make sure that you're getting your protein. Protein is going to help you to maintain that full feeling longer. Don't eat fast. Take the time to savor and enjoy your food. Um, I think that's all that I've struggled with. Um, of course the cravings, I've told you guys about that. They're not going nowhere, they're here to stay. You've got to find healthier alternatives to dealing with cur curbings. Curbings. I wish I knew how many words we were up to. If anybody could tell me how many words we are up to, and I can fact check it, I want each of the words listed. One, two, three, however many more, I will cash up you $25. So, to anybody who's watching, the first person who can fact check, that I, provide a fact checkable list of words that don't nobody understand what the hell they are, drop them down below and I will cash up you $25. Okay. Um, next, your stomach makes so much noise. Um, it's kind of embarrassing because people always think you're hungry. You're not hungry, but they think you're hungry because your stomach's like, and I'm like, I could drink water. I could, you know, just eat anything. I'm putting a bite of food in my mouth. I ain't even begin to chew it. And my stomach's like, and that's new to me. Um, 
when you get too full, your body, you'll hiccup. And it's not just like a normal hiccup. It's like, Ew! and so people either think I'm throwing up or dying or choking. So <laughs> my husband's always like, you all right in there? Um, yeah, it makes you hiccup. You will hiccup. And I think that's just when you're full. That doesn't mean when you overeat. It's just, you know, it lets you know, you can cut that off. Um, what I eat now in my fifth stage of, of life, when I'm moving back into my normal every day and I'm moving into that maintaining stage, um, as I stated before, I do have a video coming out for you guys, um, of what I eat. Um, right now I'm doing protein drinks. The one that I did find was really good and I'll link it down below is the Core Power Elite Chocolate Shake. It's 42 grams of protein, and I do those daily. Um, I do lunch meats, um, thinly sliced. I really like honey turkey. It's like my favorite. Cheese. Cheese is like my, like, I love cheese. It's like a lifesaver. Any type of cheese. Pepper Jack, Monterey Jack, Colby Jack, mild, sharp, really sharp. I don't care for, like, Velveeta, you know, none of that. Um, string cheese, cottage cheese. Y'all already know how I feel about cottage cheese. Um, basically just cheese in general. I'm still doing my cottage cheese and peaches. That's a daily thing. Um, I am doing smoothies. Um, and I'm using the IsoPure protein powder. So, I was doing the Core Power Elite. Um, I am now doing the IsoPure protein powder. Um, because I do feel as though I want something different. I really like the Core Power shakes. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, I may do one every now and then. They do pack more protein punch, but um, I do prefer um, to make a smoothie, and I'm doing smoothies with kale, spinach, and different fruits. I'm also adding fiber powder, Greek yogurt, a little bit of lactose-free milk, um, and water into those, a little bit of honey if needed. It just depends on what kind of, you know, smoothie I'm making. <laughs> Um, and I am maintaining that 64 ounces of water. Next week, it is my plan to move up to 74 ounces of water. I'm trying to add in 10 ounces of water a day extra. So for a while, I could only hit 50 ounces. And I'm talking, and that's like me drinking from the time I wake up till the time I go to bed. I could only get 50 ounces of water in. Um, but I'm doing, you know, more and more. I really like eggs. I didn't like eggs so much before my surgery. They're so good to me now. Um, my favorite thing to make, I love to like squish up or like chop up some lunch meat, um, any type, add it in um, with, you know, a little bit of spinach, green onions, you know, I'll chop those up pretty fine, and some cheese, of course, scramble them up, basically like a little scramble or an omelet. Those are really good. Another way I like to eat them, I will scramble them, add in some feta or goat cheese, pesto, and spinach. You know, and if I want to add in a little bit of meat, I'll add that in as well. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I just like those as are. Um, normally, I don't eat more than one cup of a food, one cup of food at a time. I made the mistake one time of eating a full cup of cottage cheese, and I was like, "Woo! I don't know if this is throw up or what," because I was struggling. So, and, and when I, and I really try to stay around a fourth of a cup, maybe like a little bit more than a half. I don't, it just depends on how I'm feeling or how hungry I am. Um, ground beef is still a no-go for me. Beef is still a no-go for me. It's too heavy. Um, it just kind of sits there and I don't like that feeling. I do like ground chicken, ground pork, um, as I stated, pork loin. Um, baked, grilled, sautéed, um, fried, not fried, pan-seared chicken and salmon. And what else? That's about it. Um, but to be able to get through this stage, you have to be creative. Me, I get out there on YouTube, I search around, I look at people's videos, I watch other people's videos, I get ideas from them. If I ever make something for you guys, I am going to tag them. I try to give people their props where props are due. Um, but so far everything has been <laughs> has been me and what I've been what I found out. But if I do like make a recipe or something that I've gotten from somebody else, I will make sure to tag that channel or that person. 
Um, you have to be creative. YouTube is like the number one source for me. Of course, I'll Google, but I prefer, I'm a visual person. So I like to watch people cook their meals. And I base a lot of my eating off of keto. Um, keto is, as I've stated, a high protein, moderate fat, low carb diet. Um, and that's basically what I do with my bariatric, post-bariatric surgery. So we've come to the bottom of my list. Um, so I've been asked before, what am I doing to care for my incisions? Um, I will just be honest, incisions are itchy. They are itchy like hell. I swear to y'all, I be wanting to scratch my whole skin, stomach in half from the inside out. <laughs> but um, the two things that I am using, that I use on a daily basis, I was using these two things before, but I use them more now. I actually had to buy a new box. This is Bio Skin Oil. Come on. There we go, Bio Oil. Bio Oil, it's a skincare oil. It helps improve the appearance of marks, and marks scars, and stretch marks. Um, it's good for uneven skin tone, for aging and dehyd dehydrated skin. Let me pop this open for y'all. I got this at Walmart. You can get it at Ulta. Um, Ulta or I think Target. Um, and for this bottle, it was $9. Um, the second thing I'm using, I am using the, you know, tried and true Palmer's cocoa butter. I use this in my daily life before, um, but I use it more now. And this does it heals and soften rough, dry skin. So, so yeah, these two things really help me. Um, I'll show you guys my scars in about another month, you know, give or take. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We on 31 minutes now, so I'm going to go ahead and skate on up out of here because I know you guys are tired of me. If you have not and you would like to, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here. Come be a part of the K-Gang, baby. We are here. We support. We love. Anybody is welcome. You know, everybody is so supportive. You guys support me. And I do want to say that. Thank you guys so from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys for the support for the love, for the encouragement, for everything that you guys give me every single day. You guys have no idea how wonderful you truly, truly, truly are. You have a special place in my heart. You are my family, and I love you guys more than you will ever, ever, ever know. If you like this content, please make sure to hit the like button. and lets me know I'm doing an okay job, okay? So hit the, the like button. Let me know that you like it. Let me know what you guys want to see. If there's any questions you guys have any, you know, that are just burning, that I'm not hitting, that I'm not covering, let me know. Um, it really will, you know, it kind of guides me into feeding you guys. Um, and now we've come to the time in the video where I leave you guys with a positive quote for the week, hoping that it helps you get through the week in a positive and enlightened way. Give me just a minute. I got to get it off of my notebook. All right. So I did go in and get my notebook. I threw it back there. Cause... And to this week's quote is, let all that you do be done in love. And that is Firth. Firth. Don't you guys just love me? I'm going to try this again. Let all that you do be done in love. First Corinthians 16, 14. I love each and every single one of you in a what? 10K, baby. And I will see you on what? Way in Wednesday. I'll see you guys later. Bye.